There's a Dr. Mary Freebed that's getting ready to graduate from the residency program and start the next step in her medical career. But her journey to this moment has come with life-threatening challenges. Race 8's Teresa Weekly has the story. Well, Dr. Sinski is part of a four-year program, but she's been in it five years. That's after a sudden diagnosis put her in a hospital bed. Anxiety and fear are what you might expect a patient to feel. But those are Dr. Unisinski's underlying emotions some days. Because you felt like this was going to come out. During her work as a resident physiatrist. And the day before, I was like having constant nightmares about bad things happening to me or me not being able to like graduate because of this and things like that. So. It never gets dull. <laughs> yeah. Dr. Sinski still goes for blood draws periodically to make sure her cancer doesn't come back. So literally about like 30 minutes ago before this interview, I got my test results back from my doctor, my oncologist, and she said it was negative. So I'm like super, super excited, <laughs> yeah. COVID hit during the middle of her residency at Mary Freebed. Everyone was tired, but Dr. Sinski knew the fatigue she was feeling was from more than the pandemic. A scan confirmed her fears. We were chit-chatting about how difficult residency is and, oh my gosh, COVID, how things have changed. And then it was all of a sudden, like, silent, completely silent. And as a physician myself, I know what that means. Dr. Sinski had rectal cancer. She was suddenly thrust into the role of patient. A complication during surgery left her bowels seemingly dead. And they said, like, likely non-viable with life anymore at this stage. So they told your sister that you were likely going to die? Yes. Yeah. I'm a pediatric anesthesiologist. Yuna's sister is also a physician at the hospital on the West Coast where she went for treatment. Even now when she calls me during the weekday, it, like, scares me. So I tell her, just text me ahead of time to tell me that it's like not something terrible. With their parents in Korea and COVID preventing any outside visitors, Gina was all Yuna had. I think what really almost broke me there was like talking to my parents. I had to call them and I had to call my brother and let them know. Apparently this intensive care doctor lost his brother with something very similar in the ICU and he told my sister, I won't let this happen to you. And I'm going to keep your sister alive. Yeah. Gina also knew about a similar situation her sister encountered during medical school. And we said the exact same thing. We said, non-viable with life. All we can do is literally put our hands over, say a prayer. And 24 hours later, when we opened him back up, everything was alive. So she asked Yuna's doctors to do the same thing. I understand that this might sound crazy, but this happened and it would really mean a lot if you could do that for us. It, it just kept on getting better and better. And so they were like, you know, they were like, this is like a miracle. To come back to life and to work again is, it's nothing short of a miracle. But I think if I wasn't in medicine, I didn't know that for real, I would have just shrugged it off and no fitting problems out. Mary Freebed gave Yuna a year off to go through her treatment and heal. Getting back to work was more challenging than she thought. I was going to the bathroom like 30 times a day and I was starving myself all day so I could see all my patients and every week I would lose about 10 pounds and over the weekend I would, tr I would just eat nonstop just to barely make it back up. You know, it's really difficult. Yuna wanted to quit, but her program director convinced her to give it six more months. That was the best advice that I've ever received because six months later, I was, I was happy. I was able to figure out how to properly do a bowel management program. So now I only go like once a day, like, like I did before. Kind of the compression sleeve. Going from doctor to patient and back okay, again has actually. changed the way Dr. Sinski operates. The healing starts from the patient. The patient will tell you what they need to be healed. You, you want to run for us? We don't consider Yay! fear and anxiety good emotions, mm. but they have made Yuna the doctor she is run today. Run again, run again, run again, yeah! She has given presentations to colleagues to help them better understand what life is like on the other side of the stethoscope. I wish I never went through it, but I'm glad that I'm able to show that side. Dr. Sinski will go to Seattle in July to start a fellowship that will focus on amputees. She's been known at Mary Freebed to dress up as Yuna the Unicorn. She plans to take that same enthusiasm and her new empathy for patients with her. 
In studio, Teresa Weekly, News 8.